Bible study now. But we are one of those. Welcome with this location. And let your word have express way in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Just us, you are Bible. Come and stay here. Those of you that are there, move to the front. The rest of you, Peter, come to the front and sleep your sleeping. Uh, you come to the front. And uh, you have Bible. You don't have. Let me give you one. Give me the Bible. Star of gladness be me. To share the wonder, lone and tempest toast. No storm can hide that peaceful radiant beaming. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken. When sin and grief I fill my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold up his lamp to show my Savior name. Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten. Teach me the danger of these realms below. That lamp of safety over the gloom shall brighten. That light alone, the path of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. The light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day.
to the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 21. Job, chapter 21. We read, and we are reading together. One, two, three, go. For Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let it be your consolations. Suffer me that I may speak, and after that I have spoken, mock on. As for me, is my complaint to man. And if you were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me, and be astonished, and lay your hand upon your mouth. Even when I remember, I'm afraid and trembling, take hold of my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, ye are mighty in power. Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. They are born gendered and pillared not. Their cow calved and casted not her calf. They sent forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbre and a harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? God distributed sorrows in His anger. They are as troubled before the wind and as chaff that the storm carried away. God laid up his iniquity for his children. He rewarded him, and he shall know. His eye shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the rod of the Almighty. For what pleasure has he in his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? Shall any teach knowledge, seeing he judged those that are hard? One diet in his full strength, being holy and at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk and his bones are moistured, moistened with marrow. And another diet in bitterness of his soul, and never he takes with pleasure. We shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. For you see, where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he has done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave, and shall remain in the town. The doors of the valley shall be sweet unto him, and every man shall draw after him as there are innumerable before him. How then comfort him in vain? Sing in your answers, there remaineth falsehood. May the Lord bless the reading of the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our eyes briefly. Eternal King, we are just here, Lord, to listen to your word, what you have for us in the book of Isaiah, so that we will learn and apply that our lives may be spent in your care and your presence. Lord, make the pages of this world infallible again in Jesus' name. Amen. Let it create in us the task for righteousness, Amen. the task for victory, Amen. and the task for your glory. Amen. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I welcome you all, even though we have few people around, but I'm encouraged by the number of people who are listening to us online now. I'm told that one of our maybe preachings or studies that we had, we are having increasing number of people that are listening to us. So that means the congregation, the second side of the congregation, they are out there online. So I welcome the online listeners to the read and study in Jesus' name. Yeah. And tonight is going to be great and special. I'm going to be going into real historical records of why God is God. Of course, the biblical platform remains. The in-depth study of Israel from Prophet Isaiah's record. And what we have on ground today is aching to define the biblical topic. It's going to be truly an in-depth study of Israel from Prophet Isaiah's record. And we are going to go beyond Isaiah's record. We are going to go into the book of the Kings and find out why are Israel or Israelites attached to the God Almighty? Why is it that there could not be a break away from the Lord God Almighty? And so, welcome to the book of Isaiah once again, in the name of Jesus. We are considering from verse 21 to verse 24. But I want you to understand that this verse 21 and verse, 20, uh, verse 24, they are historically loaded with facts and figures, with names, with titles. Everything you need to know about Israel is found in these verses we are about to read. So let's just have an appetizer of that verse 21 to verse 24. Can we read it together? Isaiah chapter 20, 41, verse 21. Produce your cause, say the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, say the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what will be, that we may consider them and know the later end of them and declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are God. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. Those lines, they are written with fire and with the blood of the Lamb. And it will take fire, that is the Holy Spirit to interpret those few verses unto you. But let me whet your appetite a second time as I introduce the teaching. Those few verses you have read, they are just like the WWE, what do you call it? Wrestling champion of the whole world. They say there is somebody who is a superpower and he has gone behind the scene to develop muscles. And then he comes to the man, uh, to the camera, and he flexes his muscle, and the thing boils out like a man. He says, "Look, Harry, I'm going to lynch you." And the opponent is watching on the on another camera, and the opponent is saying, "This one, I'm going to twist your neck." It's a battleground. It's a battleground, and somebody must prevail. Nobody ever, you know, goes with one. I mean, two people are never uh, accorded uh, one belt. If there's a draw. The champion carries it back home. And so when the battle line is drawn, you know blood wants to flow. And before the battle line is drawn, somebody must raise shoulder and say, I'm bigger than you. And the other person will want to put down the shoulder, no, I am also bigger than you. Bigger than you, pastor, bigger than you. What to, what, how do you think it will end? Somebody must go down. And so tonight, a battle line is drawn. The Lord for many centuries, he has been taking care of the Israelites. 
He put them out of idolatry, Abraham, in the Ur of the Chaldees. And he promised Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you an icon. A person that the whole world will look and say, God bless me through Abraham. I like the children of Abraham. Lord, can you just give me a little bit of Israelite blessing? That's all God wants to do. Because God searched the whole world. He couldn't find somebody. But he now found Abraham. And Abraham began to walk with the Lord. And walking with the Lord is not an easy game. It's never a tea party. Not even a bon vita party. It's a serious uh, uh, program. And Abraham was following. He kept on following. He kept on following. And over time, over time, Abraham begat Isaac. Let's read the other side story. And over time, Isaac began Jacob and Esau. Over time, Jacob began 12 tribes, even 13 tribes. Over time, they became multitude, 600,000 men, not counting women. If you count women and children, they are 2 million in capacity. And the Lord led them with a mighty hand. And they left Egypt. And they occupied land that had been occupied. And now, Isaiah came to the scene. The people have forgotten what God has done. Have you forgotten what God has done for you when you were down? When you were almost dying? When everybody abandoned you? Have you forgotten? How God raised a pillar to put shame out of your life? Have you forgotten? Isaiah came to the scene to remind them, why are you treating God like this? Have you forgotten those years? Why are you doing like this? And Israelite added pepper to salt or injury to pepper. They turned back and sat the idols of the people that were removed because of them. And the Lord began to persuade. He began to beg. He will send them prophets. He will send them leaders. He will send them Moses, Aaron, Joshua. All the judges came. These people refused. Nehemiah came until the Lord asked to bring Isaiah. And in this chapter, the Lord now said, all right, if you people feel it's not justifiable for you to serve me, okay, let there be a battle line between me and your God. And that's why the topic is the drawn battle line between God and the gods. The drawn battle line between God and the gods. For these 41 chapters of the book of Isaiah, God had been preoccupied with his attempt to bring the erring nation of Judah back from backsliding. The purpose of Isaiah is to restore them back to read Bible, to restore them back, to come to church, to restore them back. When they are transacting, don't, don't do evil. Don't be the buttocks of your measurement and say it's the same. Don't go and carry stock and put it inside drug and call it paracetamol because of money. Don't carry cocaine. Don't destroy the society. Stop selling fake drugs. The Lord was telling them they should not do evil like they hidden. They refused. They found pleasure in making money. And our people's lives will die. They don't mind. Just let me build mansion in the village. How I got the money, I don't want to know. I am. They tell you they are struggling. Say la. They do it a lot. They remove the name of somebody of a brand and put another name and sell it as original. These are the things that preoccupy the people of the world. And so Israel also is caught up in the web of doing evil. And now Isaiah was introduced. Isaiah came to the scene to plead with them that they should stop sinful submissions. Don't have your wife and go and be sleeping with another person's wife. Don't leave your wife and pick a small girl and destroy the life of that girl. Those are sinful submissions. The law wants to pretend, uh, prevent them from the impending captivity. The Lord looked at what he would do. He couldn't find. At, a, at, a, at, at the time of David, David did one thing. The angel of the Lord came and destroyed them. They didn't listen. The Lord sold them into the hands of their oppressors. They didn't listen. 
The Lord now said, okay, since you people will not listen to good judgment, I'm going to send you into captivity. Captivity means, as we are here in Lagos now, there's an invasion, maybe from Ghana, and they'll come here and pull down all our buildings, destroy and tie our children with chain, our pregnant women with chain, and match them with length for kilometers. They will now go and put us somewhere in a remote place and bring their people to live here for 70 years. That's what the Lord was telling them. I'm going to do with all the shouting of Isaiah. They began to laugh at him. Go and ask Jeremiah what happened. Jeremiah wrote a book and they presented it to the king. This is what the Lord said. The king looked at Jeremiah and said, You, you are reading this one. He tore the book inside fire. Jeremiah wrote another one. This captivity is coming. Nobody believed Jeremiah. False prophet came and said, Thus says the Lord, the yoke shall be broken within two years. Jeremiah said, If I have spoken by the word of the Lord, and you claim to also, you have spoken by the word of the Lord. One of somebody must die. That prophet died, yet the king did not repent. And so all the efforts of God to bring them from jail from captivity proved abortive. One of the things that provoked slavery, slavery declaration towards Judah was the unending idolatry descent. They are always moving towards idolatry. And on that platform, when you are serving idol, in whatever disguise, either they tell you that we are doing one festival in the village, and your Christianity do not have stand to know which one you should do. If they tell you in your village that we want to build maybe police station, we want to build health center, go ahead and join. But if they tell you they want to celebrate one festival that you are not sure of, you better pull back. You might be serving idol in disguise. And when you are serving idol, this is one thing you are doing. The image of God and his likeness, you are trading them for nothing. Everything that the Lord has given to you, you are trading them for nothing. If you believe in your tradition than Jesus, you are already serving idol. If you believe in your pastor more than Jesus, you are already serving idol. If you believe in the government more than Jesus, you are already serving idol. If you believe in yourself more than Jesus, you are an idol to yourself. So everything must fall down at the feet of Jesus. You know what? When Israel did that, they stoned God on his face. Despite all what he has done, God cannot take that anymore. And so, he swung into a disciplinary model and he issued a sovereign warrant of arrest the erring nation of Israel. Judah must be arrested and imprisoned by the hidden nation. It's a formation of imprisonment. When a, a country invades another country and carries that country away and populated that their land with another set of people, what is more than imprisonment? Judah must be arrested and imprisoned by the hidden nation, the verdict was passed. But may I ask you, how will this verdict be carried out? And how will it be? How will you view it if they tell you that America is coming now to invade Nigeria? If a prophet comes and says, Don't say the Lord, you'll be imagining how are they going to do it to fly from America? to come and take us please. It will look impossible. But when God has spoken, that thing must be carried out. They look at the formidability of their walls. They look at the strength of their soldiers. They look at the chariots. And when looking at the gates that you will not open for anybody to enter, and they felt we cannot be destroyed. We are fortified. That statement that the Lord has made remains a puzzle to men, but God made it happen, and it was in this fashion. Please, as the teacher this evening, permit me to appeal 
to the history that has been written down. I'm going to take you something that must remain in your mind for the rest of your life. I have before me here, I don't bring books to the altar, but I have this book here, look at it, from Malacca, from Solomon to Malacca. It's a very small book. I believe it was produced by Baptist Seminary. I have many of these books at home. And the writer of this book, he has done justice to the direction of my thoughts. And as I sat back at home at this junction of this book, I, rem I reminded myself that I have one information somewhere. I began to look for the book. I put it somewhere and I got it. How will it happen? How can a nation go into captivity, a whole nation, like maybe 7 million or 8 million people, how will it happen? And how will a family, your generation, be in captivity for all these years? This high plays out. Listen to me. The kingdom of Israel came out of the nation of Israel. There is a nation of Israel. There is a kingdom of Israel. The nation of Israel was led by the following. One, Moses. Joshua. When Joshua could not hold it down, after distributing the land, the judges came in. If you have been with us in this church, when we were studying the book of Judges, we saw the, book, the, the Judges as isolated, you know, territorial and regional leaders. None of the Judges had the capacity of Moses to wield a strong influence on the whole of the nation. And if you want to wield a mighty instrument to a, a whole nation, you've got to be a big man before God. Uh, do you see that there has never been any church that can wield the whole anointing for the whole world? No, only Christ. All the churches are you no know, regional leaders. You can't capture the whole tribe. And so we now saw the strength of Moses and Joshua and the weakness of the judges. The judges were many. Maybe one in uh, Ephraim, one in Tan, maybe one down here. There was nobody enough. As I read this story today, my mind came to this church. And now look at the scenario of how you lead people. Leading people is not an easy something. Now, the judges, was it that they lacked the word of God? Or they lacked the revelation of God? That they cannot control Israel? It's not going to be a tea party. For anybody to control a large congregation. And so when the judges were failing, another prophet was introduced. That was Prophet Samuel. Before Samuel came, Eli. Eli was really a judge. He was really a priest. Because when the production of judges failed, the priesthood stepped in in the meantime. And Samuel was not really a prophet. From the first calling, he was trained by a priest. But God did not need a priest to lead his people. He needed a prophet. So there was a transition by the power of God to change the title of Samuel to a prophet. And so a prophet came into the scene. And there was a kind of stability. Even the prophet, he has to stay in Rema. How will he supersede, uh, supervise Naphtali and God? and Simeon, and Benjamin, and Jerusalem, and Ephraim, and Manasseh. How is he going to do it? He just sit down on tree and be waiting for them to come. Because of that, there was a vacuum of leadership, and the people saw it. You know why? In a kingdom, the king rules, and he has you know, uh, soldiers located, garrisons scattered all over. In, in Nigeria here now, the president do not need to come to Lagos if there is any chaos. He has a representative here. And there will be another representative that will take care of the western side. You just call him. I heard there is a problem in Lagos. Can you please send battalion, brigade, so and so. That's how that it works. But the judges and the prophet, they could not carry that anointing. And so the people began to look at the Philistines. 
and they began to see the formidability of their kingdom. They now said, no, we need a king. The asking for the king is not a bad matter, but what was in their mind was not pleasing to God. And so God gave them the king. Now, a, a, a nation now transited to a kingdom under the leadership of Saul, 40 years. David, 40 years. Solomon, 40 years. First Kings, chapter 1. First Kings, chapter 1, verse 33. Then Beersheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reference to the king and said, let my lord the king live forever. And King David said, Call me Zadok, the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Peniah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and call Solomon my son, to ride upon my own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, anoint him the king over Israel, and blow you with a trumpet, and say, God save King God. Oh, beautiful. You see, I, I, I don't want to blame those people too much, even though they act, they, they act in the wrong way. The kingdom is almost the best form of government. And Christ will prove it right when he comes. He goes to rule, not as president. <laughs> is uh, the king. The king, the kingdom establishment is so beautiful, supported by the priest, supported by the prophet. The priests have their own generations. The prophets have their own generation. And so when you now see soldiers marching behind the king, the priest on the right, the prophet generation on the right, and they are marching, it's a beautiful scenario. Solomon built the temple and made international alliances. But the problem with Solomon was that he ended in apostasy and he died. Meanwhile, this kingdom issue is only going to be settled finally when Christ comes. That's why the people that will populate the kingdom of God, they must be lovers of Jesus. Within the territory of Israel, 12 tribes, Jerusalem was in the land of the Benjamin. That Jerusalem is not in Judah. It's in the land of the Benjamin. Judah was so close. And the Lord started selection of the king to that Benjamin, the last born. If you are going to have this series when we are studying this, uh, 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 the book of Samuel, you understand all this. Now, when Solomon was now messing up, the other tribes, they began to crouch. They began to look at him as a tyrant. And so, even if Solomon died, there was tension and war and division. First Kings chapter 12. First Kings chapter 12, verse 1. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem, and to make him king. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebah, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. Verse 4. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and the heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter and we will serve thee. In verse 10. And the young men that were grown more with me speak unto me saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto these people. That spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's 
loans. In verse 12. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Jeroboam the third day as the king has appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and pursued the old man's counsel that they gave him. And spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with weeds, but I will chastise you with scorpion. Wherefore the king hearkened not of the people. Verse 16. So, when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesus. To your tenth word, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their king. Look up here. After this tension, the kingdom was divided into two. And so we have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom of ten tribes, so to say, retained the name Israel. While the southern kingdom changed their name to Judah, after it was Judah, Benjamin, and some part of Simeon fused together. Now, look at what has happened. The kingdom of, uh, of Judah stayed 120 years. And this is the breakdown of some of the things that happened. Sorry, 120 years as a whole nation, and they have Saul 40 years, David 40 years, Solomon 40 years. For 120 years, they were together. And then there was a division. The kingdom of Judah, they have the following as their kings. Number one, Rehoboam, that is the son of Solomon. He spent 17 years. Abijah followed three years. Asa followed four years. Jehoshaphat, 25 years. Jehoram, eight years. Ahaziah, one year. There was one woman that reigned also. Ataliah, during the time of trouble, the woman came to the throne. She spent six years. Joash, 40 years. Amaziah, 29 years. Uzziah, 50 years. Jotam, 16 years. Ahaz, 16 years. Ezekiah, 29 years. Manasseh, 55 years. Now, where I'm stopping now, I'm stopping at Manasseh. If you have followed this study of Isaiah, I told us that Manasseh will be the one that will bring them totally down. Now, within this period to the point of Manasseh, the northern kingdom also existed side by side. And that has taken this Judah uh, kingdom 209 years, all alone by themselves. And so, let's see the other side. The northern kingdom, they started with Jeroboam, who was a servant of Solomon. And he reigned 22 years, followed by Nadab, two years, followed by Beasha, 24 years, followed by Elah, two years, Zimri, seven days, and Omri, 12 years. If you read the, the story of this, uh, Beasha, Elah, Zimri, Omri, it was a pathetic time where the leader of the uh, soldiers were killing each other, burning each other. It was a horrible time. And so, after Omri, we have Ahab. In the time of Ahab, there was a little bit of stability. But even though there was stability, it was a simple stability. We have Ahaziah following and Jehoram. We have Jehu. Jehu also brought some 
uh, stability, but he couldn't hold it down. We have Jehoahaz, Jehoahash, Jeroboam, another, Jer another Jeroboam. We have Zechariah, five years, since 26 years. We have Shalom, one year, sorry, one month. We have Manahe, 10 years. We have Pekka, Pekahaya, two years. We have Pekka, 20 years. We have Oshia, nine years. Now, that was the end. They went to captivity. The Assyrians came and they defeated them. Now, look up at me here. We have on one side Judah. And there were prophets that the Lord attached to the kings. In all these are uh, two hundred and nine years, there were no prophets that were attached to them. We have Obadiah, we have Isaiah, we have Micah, Jeremiah, Nahum, Zephaniah, and Habakkuk. On this side of Judah, now on the side of uh, the northern kingdom, Israel, we have Elijah, Samaria, we have Elisha. We have Jonah, we have Hosea, we have Amos. Look at the quality of the prophet that the Lord gave to the northern kingdom. Yet, with all that, they could not turn the tide. And so, after Hosea, the Assyrian came and took the northern kingdom away totally to today. They scattered them. They could not look. God did not raise any prophet, any king, to bring them back. But he looked at this side of the Judah people in the captivity of Babylon, by the rivers of Babylon. There we sang. And the Lord began to raise uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Ezekiel. He began to raise them. They became prominent in the kingdom. And they spent 70 years in captivity and that generation faded away and the Lord was still remembering his promise I don't know the sin that the northern kingdom committed that the southern kingdom did not commit but I know that the southern kingdom prophet they stood their ground they were very very men and opposing to the king Jeremiah didn't want he didn't, he didn't a brother throw me to the dungeon I'm going to preach the word and by their effort, they were able to stay the tide and they were able to come back. The people you see, they call Israel now. They are just, from what historians said it, those Judah that believe God and the part of the northern kingdom that migrated. Because there were still some of them that moved down to Jerusalem. The history of Judah and Israel could not have come up we have said it to you now. Without the instrumental hands of God, that means check your record, check your, check your background. If you are Igbo, Yoruba, Awusa, wherever you come from, is there any written record that is superior to this in your tribe? Have you ever seen God coming down to raise prophets? If you check the history of Yoruba land, you be hearing Odudua. We cannot tell you the meaning of the name. You be hearing of Ife. And you be hearing of idols. That when you see their shrine, you will run away. Check the evil people. Of course, I've been there now. And I saw idols all over. Even something that those people from the eastern side of Palestine, if they present their idols and our own, our own will not be servants. What you people call idol here is nothing but imagination of ignorance. Uh, don't you watch your Nollywood videos? How do they act Babalao? Very cheap God. You just go to your background and bring palm front. Is that God? And they put one white something and use it to rub their eye. Didn't I know that this is a chine do or whatever? <laughs> and then our from my own side, they will carry tortoise, uh, dead tortoise. 
this, this, this skeleton and hang it on their neck. Don't I know that this is the, uh, the skeleton of, of a tortoise? If you go to Palestine or you go to India or China and you see the temple of Buddha and their Hindu temple, you will run away. When you see sculptures that have been done thousands of years and they are still there, standing like a rock, Sometimes, some people are bold enough to go and carve the image on a whole rock. And they will do that work for the idol. And take all history of humanity. There is no country that can claim that they were formed like Israel was formed. That God raised somebody and then he began to multiply the person. After years, and the Lord said, that land I'm going to collect it for you. And it did. It must be the handwork of God. No nation has a history of such detail and magnitude. Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 18. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make a wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the shita tree and the matro and the oil tree I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created this look up at me here here is the battle ground now. After God has done everything for Israel, He has provided everything, leaders in their generations. And Israel never lacked leadership. Talk of warriors. Talk of prophets. Talk of priests. Talk of kings. They were produced. There was a time that their ingenuity, their ingenuity, could produce old ancient machines that can shoot arrows. As I go through documentary lines of recent, I saw them bragging again, Israelite, that they just not too long ago, they've been drilling a particular spot for more than 40 years. They are drilling inside the ground. They want to drill something like maybe between 40 to 70 kilometers inside the ground. And they want to bring something that they said that they ought to be sufficient in everything. They don't want to be importing anything. More so, all the nations around them are hostile. And now they move into their sea. They found gas that is enough. They are now looking for oil that is enough. And one man from America said, the Lord told him he should move down. That he saw a revelation. I can show you the clips here. A revelation of that there is oil somewhere. And he moved to that spot. And they are drilling. They are still drilling. As of today. And the man was boasting that very soon. <laughs> when oil comes, then Israel will be self-sufficient. That is God for you. It can never be that God is not there. Because by the time Christ will come, that land must be flowing with milk and honey. Amen. And Christ must march out. He's going to show them how to rule. He's the king. And so, now, today's study, God the Almighty, let there his resume, what do you call it? CV. And challenge the reason why Israel must have no other God but him. He brought everything on them and said, come. He called on them to bring their historical records. And let there be a jamming of presentations of records. Let there be a jamming of presentation of papers presented and a logical conclusion will be reached. That's what God is saying. Read it. Verse uh, 20, chapter 41, verse 20, 21. Produce your cause. Say the Lord, bring forth your strong reasons. Say the king of Jacob. He called himself the king of Jacob. He said, let them bring forth a 
and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things that they be, that we may consider them and know the later end of them and declare unto us this to come. Look up there. What, who, whoever will be called God must be a great person. You must tell us that there is diamond in the crown. And you must tell us in India what is inside the crown. You must tell us in Africa what is in that without any science. And you tell us that if you kill something that like inside you decay. And when it decay, can you tell us where the spring of the river is coming from? Can you tell us how the horses will be seen arrows and will not fear the same animal? And God will hear Boa, they will run away. How do you, you know, describe the meaning of an elephant? And you study the bones of elephant, you'll be wondering, why is he able to carry the leg? He said they should come and show us how things are working. How insects remain insects. How animals remain animals. How human beings, come and tell me. And let us bring it to the table so that we consider it. And then we can know who is God. The Lord is boasting here. Verse 24. Sorry, verse 23. Show the things that are to come hereafter. That we may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil. That you may be dismayed and be holy together. You know, wait see, What do you want to do? Walk in the sky. Let's see. Do good, do bad. If you can sustain yourself in the sky and Baba can walk on water, what are you saying? You try it. The person that must be God must be a superior hero that is bigger than our senses. And the Lord is throwing an open challenge. So the first point is the open challenge of the deities. The open challenge of the deities. We go back to that chapter 41, verse 21. Produce your cause, say the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons. Say the king of Jacob. I told you, whoever or whosoever claims to be worshipable, I don't know if I'm right with that grammar, whoever will prove to be worshipable or worthy of being worshipped must be stronger than man. Man is strong. We are very strong. No animal has been able to contend with us. Have you ever seen a lion trying to buy a plot of land and build it beside your house? You don't have that mentality. We are the ones who will set up a man. That man, is he a Jebolo or what you call this thing, that scientist. If he wants to study low cost, he has a small camera. And he will stay by the mood of the low cost somewhere and put a camera somewhere. And the camera will be watching when they will meet, when they were born, and you will be studying the brain of the camera. That's human beings for you. They dive into the sea, under the sea. To watch a whale, how whales are they reproduce, how they feed, their migration, and they buy something. There was one I watched, they brought something like a camera. The camera has something like super glue or so like that. A diver went and was you know, swimming with the whale and put the camera, and the camera gone the back. And the whale died into the deeper sea. The camera saw how they was able to monitor. How did they monitor um, lion? They have one uh, injection they used to shoot with a gun. If the lion is firing with target it and shoot the gun, the, the needle will enter. The lion will sleep up. They now put the, uh, the detector on the neck. So anywhere that camera is going, there is a radio that will be monitoring it, so they will locate it and stay far away and study. There is one. There was one couple that went to South Africa not long ago to study this new invention, this animal. Ah, I'm trying to remember the name of that animal. It's a very small animal, but I never knew there's an animal that can give lion sense. Very small, but a lion cannot tackle it. A small tick that like when it touch you, you are gone. You are gone. And snakes, big snakes, they can't tackle. If a snake bites that animal, it will fall asleep as if he's sleeping for the siesta. After some time, there is something in the body that will digest that poison. 
and he wake up and pursue the snake again. It's a very small animal. I have the, I have the something in my phone here, the video here. So you know that man is great. And whoever will be God to man must be greater. Not only that, anybody that will call himself a God must be bigger than angels. That's the second level, made of fire. You must be able to disappear and appear. The devil cannot do that. Have you ever seen the picture of the devil? We are just doing really catch up. So the person must be called God, must be able to pass through wall, through water, through rock, anywhere. Must be able to do many, many things. He must now be superior than God. For us to call that person God, he must be superior than the God that we call God now. So that we get this on this our God. And now say, there is a bigger God. And I've never found. Such must have, number, number three, creative power. Out of nothing. Just say, let there be something that has never been created. Such must have the power. Then, the person must have personal and transparable righteousness. You touch something like this, it must become righteous. That's why God told Moses, hey, come on, remove the shoes. That place you are standing. Because the fire is burning. That place is now holy ground. If you cannot transfer holiness, you can't be God. And you read the challenge that the Lord threw here. He said, do good, do evil. Do good, do evil. Kill somebody, wake him up. Let's see how you can manipulate it. Throw something, throw his, uh, uh, um, sorry, throw frogs. Divide the Red Sea. Let people come in, simply let people be destroyed and see what you can do. And the Lord has the pedigree. The secret of others must also be with that person. He must know everything about all of us, seven billion people. If you stand before that God, he must tell you everything about yourself. If he turns to insect, he must tell us everything. If he turns to animal, he must be, what do you call it? A uh, saver, Abby. A saver of knowledge. Bigger is it, mega, what do you call it? Megabytes or trillion bytes, if there is anything like that. It must be a real God. And so, let's read again, verse 40, chapter 41, verse 22. Let them bring forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them, and not the letter end of them, and declare the things for to come. This is God talking to And don't just put your head in. Verse 23. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that you may know that ye are God. Yea, do good or do evil, that you may be dismayed and behold it together. The Lord is saying, do something that is beyond my understanding. Then let's look at it. Whether you can beat my imagination. This is an open challenge. And it has happened at many points. Many points in the time. Any time the Godhead is being contested. Any time somebody is raising an altar the Lord always come out to fight and to defend his living. There must be a coalition of the God and the gods. Look at me here, in your life. You will get to a point that the battle of the Lord will happen in your body. The devil will come. Lean clean. God will come. Lean clean. And you are in between to decide who you will follow. And that has littered the pages of the Bible. Let's check this out. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. Verse 23. Did you see the story here? They've gone into idolatry again. And Elijah came up. And there must be a coalition. The Godhead is being contested. God is sending Elijah. Say, I'm the God of Israel. Go there. And the other person that is serving idol with the wife Jezebel, they are already pushing the people towards idolatry. In verse 23, let them therefore give us two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces. 
and lay it on wood and put no fire on them. And I will dress the other below and lay it on the wood and put no fire. And call you on the name of your God. And I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answered by fire. Let him be God. And all the people answered and said, What? Well spoken. There will be a time that your life will be challenged like that. And you need a support of heaven. And so the contest was, you know, produced. And they brought bullock. And they brought bullock. And they slaughtered their own. Verse 26. And they took the bullock, which was given them. And they dressed it. And called on the name of Peer from morning, even until noon, saying, Oh, Peer, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped on the altar, which was made. Verse 29. And it came to pass. When the midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that began it. Verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And now the people came near unto him and repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Verse uh, 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came here and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, I thought you would say amen. Yeah, Let it be known these days that thou art God amen. in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things by thy word. Hear me, O oh Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. What happened? Then the, fire the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stone and the dust and lit up the water that was in the trench. Well, my time is almost going. But that is not the only place that the Lord showed up. Rewind the story backward and it will land in the past and it will show you that Israel was, you know, produced out of contention of the gods and the Godhead. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Verse 19. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in the vessels of wood and in the vessels of stone. That was a way the Lord was demonstrating that He is God. They didn't agree with they, 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 they were not ready. Chapter 8. Verse 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come upon the land of Egypt. The Lord did that. They were not beaten. They didn't bow. And the contest continued. Verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. He did that again. Pharaoh refused to bow. Chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet I will bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go then. When he shall let you go, he shall surely, he shall surely trust you out. Yes, all together. And so we find ourselves in chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And he began to tell them what to do. What is it? He wants to kill all the firstborn. And the Lord was saying, I am the Lord God. I am the Lord God. I am the Lord God. Until Pharaoh was destroyed of all the firstborn of Israel, the Lord proved himself. That is God. But do you know that this battle also did not end in the Old Testament? It came up also. When the gods 
and the Godhead are colliding, something must happen. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It's that is the context of do or die. And Christ stood for the Godhead. Christ maintained the standard that was set in the Old Testament to prove that God is God. Another challenge of the frontier deities that wants to claim the Godhead from Christ was fought. And may I tell you this, there will be an open challenge in your life one day. And get ready. The devil will come and rap to you. Take all your blessings away. Put your destiny somewhere and say, worship me. And they will tell you if you don't come back to the village. You don't come back to the village. And to do this with us, you will not prosper in Lagos. And it will be doing as if it's going to happen. I met an old friend in my former church, an elderly man, a few Sundays ago as we finished. I was hanging around there and he came around. And he went this thing and he said, my mom is dead. He's from this area, Okoro area, maybe on those things. Say, my mom is there. I say, I'm sorry. Well, where are you going to do the uh, burial? He said, oh, my mom, my mom, she's the most wicked person in my life. I said, what happened? That he, she said, that Jesus you are following. That Jesus you are following. You are going to drop that Jesus. That there is one shrine or whatever in their family that he must come and take over. And the woman has promised that he's not going to have child. And the children will, will never be good. He said they were in a program. And the pastor came up with this thing that, how about if I say your enemy should die? <laughs> I said, it's the problem. Uh, the devil will get to that point that the father and that prayer will be invoked. You didn't say amen. Yeah. Uh, are you afraid of the devil? Yeah. The, the read and study is to psych your dead memory up. It's to wake you up that God is God, nothing else. And the Lord has thrown the open challenge. Go through your Bible. Where did you see devil winning, winning God? <laughs> where in all the uh, feelings of except where the child of God goes erring. Except you leave us here and you are jumping around to where you are not sure. Is that the devil will close in on you. But if you are with God, he can't win the battle. I'm going to tell you some things towards the end. I'm coming to the second aspect now. I have finished with the open challenge of the deities. Now, the second topic is the devil's naughtiness. Everybody say it. The devil's naughtiness. Say it a second time. The devil's naughtiness. Now, go back. I'm not just quoting it from my head. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 24. Behold, ye are nothing, and your work of naught, and an abomination is he that chooses you. Ah. Look up here at me. Be it known unto you all that no matter how big a shrine is, it will be destroyed one day. No matter how devil occupies, he will be cast out one day. Amen. The owner of this world is nothing but Christ alone. Nothing more. And he has given us power. The devil has no reason to brag and rule your life. And over the years, over the years, I've read history. I've read different writings, hard writings of ancient people. The uh, apostolic era, the post apostolic era, then the post post apostolic era. I read some of their writings and I read how the frontier fighters, those who praise the tape for Christ, they subdue kingdoms. They may be learned, they may not be learned, 
whoever God is choosing. He may be a theologian. He may have gone to seminary. He may not have gone. God chooses anybody. He may choose Luke the physician. He may choose Paul the apostle. Whoever is laying hand, he may choose people who are not even learned, like the CAC founder. Whoever the Lord is putting that spirit on will crush the powers of darkness. Yeah. I didn't like your amen. Yeah. Listen, Paul, Peter, and the rest, that's their generation. That's the apostolic generation. When they died, some people thought that Christianity is gone. No. Iranians of Lyon, Iglesias of Antioch, God raised them up again. Those who saw John, they belong. They began to tell the story. And from then, we have St. Augustine. Oh, an erudite scholar. From there, we have Martin Luther. That was the post generation of people who held it up. They were all looking for devil here and there. I, I had one of them was praying one day and he knelt down at the corner where he used to pray and he smelled something like uh, 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 something that he smelled and he looked and he saw the devil and he put that devil. I would say that's what is meant for the devil yes. he cannot claim any right in the kingdom where Christ is glorified if there is no fighting, no quarreling, no tribalism if there is no segregation no tapiani I don't want to use what that gossip. I don't know where they bring it from. I don't know the meaning of gossip. A brother called me yesterday in the night and he began to lament, he lament, he lament, he lament. I said, brother. I say, brother. Brother. I said, cool your mind. I said, are you a policeman? He said, no. Are you a soldier? He said, no. Are you a security person? He said, no. I said, the military people, they operate by facts. What did they, were you there when that thing happened? What did you say? You want to get you with your word. I said, we, we operate by faith. Then I told him, I said, if you have tried everything in your life, this must be your guiding principle. If you have tried everything in your life, it's not that you are lazy. You want to walk. There's no work. You, you save money. Your capacity could not save. You have done everything. I said, the next partner is faith. Is no more your capacity. You need faith. I said, brother, move ahead. Move ahead with me. When we started this church, there was nothing on the head. There was nothing to cover. Now we have a covering. I prophesy to you that we will soon move out of this territory. Yeah, the devil cannot stop us all. Yes. Say amen to that. Yeah, yeah. When these people led, they thought that Christianity, ah, Martin Luther, oh, John Wesley, oh, George Whitefield, you know, John Knox, so, ah, the Lord said, he remains, never said, he remains. Yes. Ah, the Lord is the God. Yes. Let him produce Boko Haram. I'm telling you, the Lord will produce more Kumui in the name of Jesus. Yes. Ah, let him produce the Ansaru Islam. Yes. The Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. The church of Evangelion, 10 years ago, was not there. Yes. I was swimming around and the Lord looked and said, come on, come on. Come on. And we are here. Another church is coming. Let me say here again. The whole land will be filled. And the Lord has chosen you. I'm looking at your face. I'm looking at your face. The Lord wants to put something on you. Say, let them come. Let them, let them come. Let them show their power. We will show our God. I don't know why you are sitting down. Show your God. Show your God. Show your God. Show your God. I think you don't understand. Show your God. Say, God, arise on my behalf. Arise on my behalf. No, those gods are nothing. They are nothing. All the powers of darkness, they are nothing. Your God is a big God. Your God is a powerful God. And don't shake in it. Don't shake in it. He's the Almighty. Ah, you are not praying this prayer very well. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hey, raise up your hand. If you don't have testimony and you are thinking God is dead, take one by force. 
if you don't have anything to show that God is alive, one miracle must go home with you. Say, God, I believe. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Unless you don't know how to pray. <laughs> there is going to be a transformation in your life. Ah, wait a minute. I'm angry. In Jesus' name, I pray. You know, just give me another amen. Okay, give me one more. You know what? Open your eyes. As I began to follow God the way I'm doing, I began to know the composition of human beings. Who you are. Except God reveals to you, you will pick your degree who will offer you something. It's true. But there are times that all your efforts cannot do this. I've been in that shoes before. I saw this woman in the galaxy yesterday. I was praying for her. And I began to see, <laughs> can human being operate there? And this morning I was praying for this one. I saw another thing. I said, Lord, at this still in existence. Whatever I say about you is about me. It's about you. God revealed that, revealed this, that I should know that the people are here. There is a power that is bigger than them that is in operation. And so don't be ashamed when I'm talking about your case. There is something in you that we have not discovered. There's an idol sitting on your glory. Unless it is released. Say that fire come down. And consume all the powers of darkness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. It's because of you open your mouth. It is because of you. Ah, you are not praying this prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. There must be something that will shake you inside tonight. And whatever is full of idol will come out by itself. By the anointing, I'm pointing to everybody. Let us idols that your mommy, your daddy swallowed by drinking river water, by taking that juju inside, by taking that asso, let that be walk out by fire. Yeah. Say, walk out for my belly. Walk out for my stomach. Walk out for my throat. Walk out for my blood. Walk out, devil. If you don't pray that prayer, we will come and shake you. I will come and shake you. Don't allow the devil to dominate your life. Lord, I bring in calm by fire. Right in the top of my frequency. Lord, by the spirit of God in me. I will let the devil walk out. Let the devil walk out. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Right in the home. I say, walk out. In the life of my Lord. I say, walk out. In the life of my mind. I say, walk out in the name of Jesus. Right in the top of my frequency. In my heart, in my soul, my feet. I pray. I'm not going to do that. 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 I
Amen. I pray. Amen. Do you know what? The reason of your suffering, I don't know. There's no reason. Yes. After all this that God has done for Israel, it's because of you. So that when you look at Israel, you say, wow, this is what God wants to do for humanity. I am following Jesus. Jesus. Now, as you have followed Jesus, where is the result? The demons seems to be too powerful. Am I right? No. It's tonight, oh. There's a battle line that is drawn. That spirit called demons. Satan, play with your soul. Moving your soul to the river. Moving it to the valley. Scattering your wealth. You are up today. You are down tomorrow. You do this failure. You do this failure. And <laughs> people that are not as handsome as you, they are doing it, they are succeeding. I cancel that trouble in your life. Put your hand on your chest. Say, I belong to God. Say the second time. Say the third time. I will not serve any idols. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Open your eyes. The devil talks to you. You hear. Sometimes he doesn't say it by talking. He shows you the revelation. He will be telling you the dream. This is what is going to happen to you next. That's devil talking. Why is devil having capacity to talk to you? The audacity. When you have the king of kings, when you have the lord of law, why are your hands, why is Naira falling from your hand? You are not able to hold money. And is the king of kings. Your suffering comes to an end tonight. Yeah. I declare by the word of the Lord, all the demons oppressing you, they will go down to the bottom of the yeah. All around you, your windows will carry fire. Yeah. Your doors will carry fire. Yeah. Your seals now, they will carry fire. Yeah. There will be no point in your life that the devil will hold you down anymore. Take yeah. it to the Lord in prayer. Father, everywhere fire. The windows fire. My shoes fire. My clothes fire. The back fire. The laptop fire. The phone fire. Everywhere fire. Right now, God, my throat, God, all my doors fire. The roof fire. Everywhere fire. Lord, the fire. Ceiling fire. Right now, God, I pray for all the rooms and the kitchen, God, I pray. Lord, fire. My children fire. My wife fire. Everywhere fire. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Another satanic fire. Right now, God, the good time in the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray because I serve the King of Kings and I serve the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is my God. The Lord of Lords is my Father. I come to the Lord of the in Jesus name I pray all of you that are here you are the fighters of God and I stand here I want to declare something between now and the end of next month this is July, it's August. Yes, sir. By August, you will look back, you will not see poverty again. Yeah! The Lord must work it out. Yeah! I have received the mandate to open the door of possibilities. Yeah! And it's going to start with all of you. Yeah! Lord, I thank you for 
how you have taken us tonight. I bless your holy name. How you have explained the word and the enthusiasm of the listeners. Father, I pray you will make this world to work wonders in their life. Wherever there is emptiness, let there be fullness. Wherever there is disappointment, let there be fulfillment. Wherever there is, I don't know how my future will be, Father, give another revelation. You are proving to us that the devil has nothing to show. You have everything. And we are at your back, Lord. We are following you. The devil has no part in our lives from this night. Every spirit and soul that is here, the devil will no more take you to foreign lands. The devil will not walk you on the sky. He will not walk you inside the river. He will not walk you inside the trees. Be possessed by the Holy Ghost. Be enabled by the Holy Ghost. Be supported by the Almighty. Everybody shout to miracle. Shout it again. Shout it again. Say miracle is my portion. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Era of miracles. Era of provision. Era of signs and wonders. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, say it by yourself. See, I am blessed tonight. It's not grandma. Let that statement you made turn to millions. Amen. See, I am blessed tonight. I am blessed tonight. Let that statement you are making, let it turn to scholarship. Yeah. Say, I am blessed tonight. I am blessed tonight. <laughs> let that statement you turn it to a landlord. Yeah. Say, I am blessed tonight. I am blessed. Let it turn to contract and contract and contract in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we are, we are happy tonight that you have met with us and you will remain with us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our time.